Sometimes you come up with an idea and you've just got to share it. And this is one of them. I developed this idea. I came up with it because I wanted something. I'd got a stack of end grain that I needed planing for some drawers that I was making. I was making four drawers, but I didn't just have 16 ends to do. I had about 30 end grain pieces to plane and they varied in width from eight inches wide and they went down to little end grain pieces like this and then thin boards and thicker boards and I wanted something that would encompass all of it and this is the simplest jig that I've ever come across for end grain planing. It works better than a shooting board for what I wanted and at that time. So I'm gonna show you how it works first. So if I've got a piece of wood like this, I slide it on here let the end protrude past just enough to take a shaving, squeeze it tight. So I've got it registered along this long edge and I'm just protruding past the top a paper thickness or whatever number of shavings I want to take from this. Okay, clamp it in the vise, it's lined up, I can feel it just past the top. Any plane you care to use, you could use a, a number four like this, my favorite plane. And you take shavings, and guess what? This is, uh, this is elm. And when I put this onto here, this was the edge I registered against this stock here. Take this, place it on here. Oops, slipping around. And I've got dead square, and it's square in that direction, but it's also square in that direction. It's dead square every time. I've never failed with it. So that's one, but you can also stick a very ultra narrow skinny piece in, flush it down and drop it into the vise. So it's only the wood that you're planing and the platform that's clamped in the vise. This we do exactly the same way. Now this jig is designed to do up to three quarter inch thick stop. The plywood on the back stops the edge from fracturing. We're level with this surface, but look, the heel of the plane registers on this side. The blade cuts very marginally onto that surface, but not enough to alter this platform. You've got this end perfectly square. And of course you can do just about any wood you want to. You can do plywood. This super thin piece will go in there. A super short piece will go in there. It works perfectly. I'm gonna show you how to make it. This is the simplest jig for this type of work. And just imagine how much time you're going to save. If you're an, uh, uh, an, an enthusiast with hand tools as I am, this was gonna save you. It's gonna save you bags and bags of time. So what I did is I put a little time into this I squared my, and my surfaces, I got everything true, dead flat, no twist, things like that. So we're going to start putting this platform together. I've got this square mark on here and this, so these are my two registration face. This one is going towards you. Now this is a left and right hand version. I should have shown you that. This is only for squaring end grain. It's not for doing moldings and things like that. So you put it in the vise this way, you're planing that way. Turn it upside down, if you're left-handed, you can go the opposite way, or if you need to go in that direction, you can, just to cover that off. So what we've got to do is we're gonna attach that to that, and this is going to go in between, and that just catches the short pieces when you come to work on short, short sections of wood. Let's put this up on the bench top. And the most important thing for this, you probably, if you have any idea about what I'm making here, you probably will notice that this, this long edge has to be dead square to this edge. So we're gonna use the square on this edge to square everything up when we get to it. But first off, what I'm gonna do is drill some holes in here. What I'll do is I'll just use my finger as a guide, pull a line, and then go from this side, pull a line, go from, you can put these just about anywhere. I want five holes in here. So I'm just using my finger as a guide. So that's one end done. This is the other end. So I'm gonna do both. So I'll have a double use version here. And then somewhere in the middle there, I'm gonna put the middle one. You can put this just about anywhere. I'm a pretty good guesser 
at central center points. I'm going to drill some holes. I'm just going to go through on those crosshairs. Now this is a piece of equipment that doesn't need too much finessing. Same on this end. And I'm going to go ahead and countersink those just a little bit so that the heads sit down above the surface, or uh, below the surface. And it's going to be up to you whether you glue these in place. So I've made my reference, I've got this mark here that tells me that this is already square. So I've trued these up, I've got these reference faces on here, those are trued up. So when I put this one, let's just go ahead and put this one on first. As I said, if you want to glue those, you can. It's entirely up to you. I probably wouldn't because I might, I don't really need it. With five screws in there, it's a bit of an overkill. But you can glue it if you want to, if you think you might never take it apart for whatever reason. So let's put the first, let's line the top edge up and the end up first and then take a screw and drop it into that middle one. That means we can pivot it when we need to, if we need to. Okay, we've got that. Now, this is where it becomes so simple because we take the square along that trued up edge at the top and we tap until we're square. Are we square? We are now. Drop your second screw in and then you still have the opportunity to tap it a little bit more. Nice and tight. Now I'm going to go back in with my square to see if anything shifted. And it did, just a hair. So one tap here. I'm dead square. No, I'm not. One tap back. Half a tap. And I'm lined up, so I've got it. So I'm checking after each of the screws to make sure that nothing shifted. Great. Just in case. And if it did, guess what? I can take a shaving off the top carrier, the carriage, and that will true it up. So it's not, uh, I can still square everything up later. So that's one done. The next one is exactly the same. So the square face mark, face edge is going on the outer edge. So this one is going here like this. Line just the end up. Again, if you let it run past, it doesn't matter. As long as this is, as long as this is square to the carriage, that's all you need because you can plane everything square whenever you're ready later. So I've left mine past a little bit. I'm, a, I'm pretty near flush, but I might leave it just a hair past, just so I can plane it through after. So again we put the square on here and we check ourselves for square. So I'm out about a sixteenth this time. That was a bit heavy wasn't it? Yeah, see that?
that's it. So drop a screw in. And the nice thing is, if you do plane this just a tad, catch it with the plane when you're planing the end grain of your wood when you're working with this, you just true it up with a quick shaving, that's all. Yeah, I did move there. Mm. Great. A little extra tight on those. And that's it. So that's that part done. The next part is this piece needs to go in between here and on the back. So just use your finger as a guide and make a pencil line. <sighs> Much good it is to me because it's on the other side. I'm going to change this. That's a bad idea. I'm going to pull this pencil guide on this side like this. Would I glue this? No, I, I really wouldn't. It's just not necessary. So, screws. I need some screws. I'm thinking three will be plenty. Even if I use self-drilling screws, I still prefer to drill a hole. Just like it. Because this one isn't, nothing is hinged on accuracy for this part. This is simply to butt the wood up against as you're working when you're planing, when you're lodging it in the vise. I've spent a little bit of time making sure everything is squared up and trued, simply because it's worth it at this point. That's it. So this is the guide. Now then, let's take a look. Let's do the super thin piece. Drop it in here. It's not far off square already. Put this in here and it's a beautiful piece of equipment to work with. So listen, put the heel of the plane on, the blade is overhanging the wood. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Keep going, keep going. You'll feel it when it, see now, there's the last shaving. So now it's not taking a shaving. That's how we use it. It's perfect for end grain, square uh, truing. There it is. See how we did? Dead square every time. It never fails. And it's square this way too. Perfect. Thank you.